Sorry about that. Hey guys, it's really good to see you tonight. I'm glad that you've tuned in. Get yourself comfortable, because we got some really awesome things happening tonight. Before we get started though, tonight is gonna be a little bit different. We're not gonna be doing uh, it the same way that we've done the last couple weeks. Tonight, the game actually is gonna be happening after this video. In the description, you'll find a link for our game, which we will be doing live after this video. So once this video has ended, go ahead and click that link and participate in the game. It's gonna be fun. But you know, since we've been on lockdown and quarantine, we've spent a lot of time online and looking at memes and maybe TikToks or something like that. But if you guys remember Vine, man, Vine had some really funny material on it. And I was just thinking about it the other day about how much I enjoyed it and how funny some of the stuff on there was. So if you wanna take a moment with me, take a trip down memory lane, I wanna show you some of my favorite Vines. <laughs> Get to Del Taco. They got a new thing called Free 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 Shavaka Do. Free Shavaka. Hurry up. We're gonna be late for school. Bruh, chill. I don't know why you're in a big time rush. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Wow. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'm not even worried about it. Hey Nora, do you pee your pants? What? Do you pee your pants? Yes, sometimes. Come on. Come on, Tuck. Hello? Yeah! Ah! Stop! I could've dropped my croissant! <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope it does. The avocado. Thanks. Those are pretty good, right? Maybe you have a favorite vine and you want to send that to me later. I will always accept memes or vines if you've got some good stuff that make me laugh. I'd love to hear it. But before we get our, into our message today, we have something special. If you notice, I have my Centurion Helmet of Prizes. We had a competition this last week, a challenge to help you guys basically not be bored, but 
you had to find household ingredients, ingredients, household components, whatever you want to call them, find stuff around your house and recreate something over the week. So we had a, a crime scene, a Mona Lisa, we had a blanket fort. So we had a lot of good uh, participation that happened. And I'm really glad that you guys uh, took a hold of it, except for, especially the blanket fort. Some of you really did real good with the little blanket fort. So that, that was really fun. So we're gonna, we're gonna draw our name here. David Moss is the only one who did two days worth of material. So his name is in here twice, but there's still quite a few names in here. So really, it's, any, it's anybody's game. So let's see who I draw. I'm gonna close my eyes. Let's do this one right here. All right, so the winner of this last week's competition is David Moss. David, I will be giving you a special prize of a hand-delivered Domino's pizza and a two liter just for you. I, I will reach and get in contact with you later for all of that. So yeah, pizza man. So keep an eye out in this next week. We have fun little prizes and competitions. Even if there's not a prize to go with it, it's fun just to interact with something that everyone has interacted with. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. So also tonight, I wanna let you guys know about a couple things. Uh, first off, the sad news. For those of you that were going on our Chicago trip this summer, unfortunately, the Chicago trip has been canceled. If you have not received a message to me, from me regarding all like the details about the payments and the fundraiser and everything like that. Uh, make sure you get in contact with me for that. The other thing is that Spencer Lake, first off, you guys need to pray for Spencer Lake. Go and when you go to bed tonight, lift up a prayer for summer camp because we don't want that to be canceled. But as of right now, it's not canceled. So if you want to go ahead and you can register for camp, there's a link in the description. Go there and fill that out and reserve yourself a spot for camp. Other than that, we have a really fun game, or not even a game, it's an event for your family. That's not just for you, it's for your whole family. It's gonna be really awesome. There's gonna be prizes. It's gonna be something that will get you involved. It's going to be an awesome, awesome time, and it's going to be a lot of fun if you allow it to be so. On uh, April 26th, which is about two and a half weeks from now, we are having our text message scavenger hunt. This will be a time for your family to find, to recreate, to uh, get something, whatever it might be, and respond, and then text it back to us as soon as possible. We'll be giving away prizes for uh, the most points at the end of the night, because you earn points for stuff. Uh, we're giving away points for the most creative uniform, and we're giving away prizes for um, most creative overall. So it's gonna be a really fun, awesome event, something for you guys to look forward to, so make sure you register for that. There's a link in the description to register for that, so get your family registered. All right, with that, guys, we're gonna be transitioning into our lesson today. But before we start our lesson, I wanna let you guys know something. This lesson, I'm gonna be asking you guys to write some stuff out and to uh, put stuff on a piece of paper or, or comment it in the section. So what I'm gonna give you a little bit of time right now is I want you to find a journal, a notebook, just a slice of paper, whatever it is, and a writing utensil. Go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. Okay, so now that you've got your piece of paper and your writing utensil, um, I wanna tell you guys a story because uh, we've all had experience with forgiveness in some way because all of us have, have messed up at some point. Um, I remember when I was a little kid and I was like, was probably like six years old or something like that. Uh, I, my only sibling was my sister Sable at that time and we, we had these little 
I don't know if you guys have ever seen them. They're called like Polly Pockets and they they were like rubbery and stretchy and they had like little tiny magnets in their hands and feet and everything like that. And because I was a weird child, um, I really liked to chew on them because they like the, the rubber or whatever material they were made out of was like, felt good to like, like chew on. Again, I, I was a weird child. I don't know if you've ever had like a rubbery substance that you just like to gnaw on just to chew. I don't know. I'm kind of weird. Anyway, so but there was one particular one I chewed on a lot. And <laughs> and I, I remember I chewed on it so much that like the, the, the paint or the coloring or whatever completely wore off her and she had like her little like little, little Polly Pocket face had no like paint on it at all. She was like, like a no face, she was just, just blank. And I remember when I was a little kid, I had to apologize to my sister and I never felt like I would ever have to say the words that I'm sorry that your Polly Pocket doesn't have a face now. I don't know, maybe you have a really funny reason that you've had to ask for forgiveness. You can uh, go ahead and comment that. Comment, comment what's a really fun reason that you've had to, funny reason that you've had to ask for forgiveness in your life. You go ahead and do that now, but you see, I don't know how you guys feel like, maybe you can, maybe you can also comment this, but forgiveness is not always easy, especially when the circumstances involve like hurt or uh, painful feelings. I mean, what do you think? Do you think it's easier to forgive someone or to be forgiven by someone? Maybe, maybe you can comment that in the sections or write it on your little journal. Is it easier for you to forgive someone or is it easier for you to ask for forgiveness? I mean, what does forgiveness even mean? Like, what does forgiveness mean for you? So let's do this. Open up your journal, your piece of paper, take a second here and write out your definition of what does forgiveness mean? Maybe if you want to go ahead and put that in the comment section. What does forgiveness mean to you? See, I remember a story of when I had to learn the lesson of forgiveness. Again, I was younger. I wasn't six years old. I was probably closer to 12 or 13 or something like that. But in my youth group, I was the only person of my age. I was the youngest person in the youth group. And so I would constantly try to fit in and stuff. And um, I, there was one time I was uh, wrestling with a dude outside. It had just rained. He was wearing his like new white hoodie that he wore and everything like that and I was just being weird and rambunctious and, and, and obnoxious um, and we were like sh wrestling together and I ended up like getting like grabbing him and I ended up throwing him to the ground and I, I hurt his arm pretty badly but I also threw him into a pile of mud and I destroyed his new hoodie, his new sweater. And he was obviously really upset with me because it was like the first time that he was wearing it and I destroyed it and I hurt him. So he was very upset with me. And later, um, because his parents had like talked to my parents and uh, that whole thing, uh, my parents made me call him and say I'm sorry and ask for forgiveness. Now, I don't know if you've ever had to do something like that where you've had to go and like ask someone for forgiveness when you knew you were very much in the wrong and like, he, me and him weren't like the best friends, so I didn't even know if he was going to like actually forgive me or anything like that. So it was really, um, it was really emotional for me as a 12 year old. It was probably the most emotional thing I had felt at that time. Uh, calling him up and like saying, hey, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Uh, will, you, will you forgive me? And asking forgiveness is never, never easy, but it's always such a relief and such a, a release of a burden when, when we are forgiven. And he did forgive me. He, he said, yes, you know, I forgive you. It's okay, it's just a sweater. And we were able to move on from that. So it was such a big relief for me that, um, that he, would, he forgave me. But here's the thing about forgiveness is that you can only ask forgiveness from the person that you've harmed. Meaning that like you can't ask the dude's sweatshirt I destroy forgiveness because you weren't the one that destroyed his sweatshirt. I was the one and I can't forgive someone else that needs forgiveness from you or you need to ask forgiveness from because I wasn't the one that did them harm. 
See, the thing is that you can only ask forgiveness from the one that you've harmed, and no one else can do it for you. And I'll be honest, that was not the the only thing that I've needed forgiveness for. I've probably, I've messed up many times since then, and I've had to ask forgiveness before. Maybe you have too, probably. See, we're, we've all had experience with some type and form of forgiveness at some point. Maybe you're talking, thinking about a time that you have been forgiven, or maybe you're or thinking about a time that you forgave someone, or maybe you're thinking about a time that you were supposed to forgive someone and you never, you never did and you haven't let that go. Or maybe you're struggling with that right now. Maybe you're struggling with forgiveness and uh, that you need to forgive someone, or you're waiting for someone to forgive you that you, or, some, or ask forgiveness from you. And, and so all of us have, have experienced and have tried to deal with this forgiveness in some way. And see, forgiveness is something that you uh, not only need to give, but it's also th something we have to receive. And I want to learn from someone today that I think is, is really, really good at, at this whole forgiveness deal. And that's, that's Jesus. See, the thing is, is whether you have been in church forever or whether you've like, this is your first time looking at anything that's remotely Christian, all of us have some uh, dealing, have some form, have some concept about who Jesus is. You might think he's a night teacher or just a carpenter. Or maybe he's, he's a really nice guy that we tell stories about. Whatever you think of Jesus, uh, we want to take a couple, couple weeks here. We're going to walk through who is Jesus really? Who Jesus is? So I want you right now to grab that piece of paper that I uh, told you about at the beginning, and I want to want you to write so or write out who is Jesus. So who is Jesus? Write that question out, and then I want you to answer that question in your own words. Who is Jesus? Um, just take a few minutes. I'll give you like 10, 15 seconds or whatever here, and just answer that question. Who is Jesus? Okay, now that you've answered that question in your own words, who is Jesus, I want you uh, to write another question below that. Say, who do other people say Jesus is? So write that down. Who do other people say Jesus is? Who do other people say Jesus is? Write that question out. And then I want you to take a couple seconds here. I'm going to give you around 30 seconds um, and write out that answer. Maybe who would people in your school say Jesus is? Maybe write a couple answers down. Maybe get a wide uh, range of like different people who they might say Jesus is. Go ahead, answer that question. See, the thing is, is people have always had questions about who Jesus is. Through all of history, there's always been the question about who is Jesus. When Jesus was still on the earth, he knew people were wondering the same thing too about him. And in fact, uh, some of his best friends, his buddies, didn't really know who, who he was really. And so one day he just straight up asked them, who am I? And so why don't you turn with me here uh, grab your Bible if you have a Bible, or grab your phone if you're not on your phone. Go ahead, grab your phone, and turn with me to Matthew 16. Matthew's the first book in the New Testament. So go ahead, Matthew 16. I'm going to flip here in a second. Go ahead, grab your Bible, open your phone. Turn to Matthew 16, verse 13. 16, 13. So it's also going to be up on the screen, but if you want to, you can read this uh, along in your Bible with me. So here we go. Matthew 16, 13. <clears throat> when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? He was referencing himself. They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So, 
when Jesus asks them the question, he says, who do people say I am? They give him a, a large number of answers. They say, you know, you could be Elijah, or you could be Jeremiah, or you could be one of the prophets. If you're wondering what a prophet is, that's a term that's used a lot. If you're wondering what a prophet is, a prophet is someone who speaks to God and then from for God. So they speak to God and then for God. So that's what a prophet is. And so they're saying, you're, you were a really good, you're a really good teacher or religious leader. That's what a lot of people say you are. Uh, and see, the thing is, in a sense, that they, they were right, that Jesus is a great teacher, and he was a great religious leader, and he was a prophet. But the thing is, is that he was also so much more than that. Jesus isn't just another prophet, and he's not just a good teacher. Jesus is God. After his disciples answered that question, who other people say he is, he, he kind of just like turns it on them, and this time he asked them another question, but he didn't want to just know what other people thought about them. He wanted to know what they thought about him, his best friends. What do you think I am is what he asked them. And Peter answers him. And Peter answers him, tells him these two things. Peter says, you are the Messiah. The Messiah is a word that was, that was talked about a lot in that time that is a people, a person that God would send to deliver the Israelites from oppression, basically like the savior or whatever. So Peter says, you are the Messiah. And then he also says, the son of the living God. That is a big statement. If someone told you that they believed you had come to save the world because you are the daughter or son of a powerful deity, you'd probably think that you were on some sort of prank show. But in Jesus's case, it was true. And Peter was right. So we're going to um, move on to another um, scripture here. Wow. Uh, we're going to turn to Mark this time. So as you're turning there, I know it can be hard. I know it can be hard to believe, to understand, or even really defend the statement that Jesus is God. So we're going to turn to Mark and we're going to, I want to tell you a story um, that I will think I help answer that question a little bit about is Jesus God? So as I read this story today, I want you to think about this happening here in your house, in your room, wherever you are, I want you to just visualize and think about this happening in your very room. So turn with me to Mark chapter 2. Mark is right after Matthew. So it goes Matthew and then Mark. So Mark chapter 2. I'm turning there with you as well. If you really don't want to read in the Bible, it will be also up on the screen. I'm having trouble finding Mark here. There we go, Mark. <laughs> Mark chapter 2, verse 1. Here we go. Imagine this happening in your room. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he came home. So many gathered that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And then he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing him a paralytic, carried by four, by four of them. Since they could not get to him, could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd. They made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Your son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow think that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and take your mat and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this before. See, Jesus had returned home from a preaching tour around Galilee. So he was basically a celebrity. Everyone knew that he was doing miracles and was doing really great things. So he returns home, and then he starts talking to people, and this huge crowd forms in the house and just outside the house. And so um, 
these, these people, knowing that Jesus has done amazing things, they bring their friend to him. And I, I mean, like, think of these people. These are such good friends. Not only do they carry this dude across town, but when they get to the crowd, they're like, you know what? We need to get this guy to Jesus. So they're going to go and they vandalize a random person's house. They don't even know the person. They just rip a hole in the ceiling and they lowered this dude to the ground. But here's the thing, is that when Jesus sees the man and he sees the friend's uh, actions, he looks at the man and what does he do? He says, your sins are forgiven. This paralytic man is carried into the house, lowered through the ceiling, and he's sitting there and Jesus says, I forgive you. Now, that's great, but forgiveness wasn't what that man was going after. The man wanted to be healed. He was paralyzed. But why did Jesus offer this man forgiveness? Had this man done something to offend Jesus? Maybe it was the whole ripping a hole in the ceiling and lowering himself down? No, it was actually much bigger than that. See, a few moments ago, remember when I said that you can only um, give forgiveness or ask forgiveness uh, from the people that have harmed you or you, you harmed? See, the thing is, by offering forgiveness to the man, Jesus was letting us know that 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 man had done something to harm Jesus. But what? To understand that, you need to understand that because God created everything, you, me, the world, your room, the plants, your phone, everything, God created everything. Anytime we harm ourselves, others, or the world we live in, we harm God. So sin really a sin is, any sin against what God has created is a sin against God. That time you may have cheated in, on the tents or punched your, your sibling or talked back to your parent or wrecked a car or done something awful. That sin is really a sin against God. And that's the bad news. But here's the good news. And this is actually so deep that I just like, oh my goodness. Here's the good news. Because Every sin is in reality a sin against God. God has the authority and the ability to forgive that sin. You want to think about that for a second. If, if, if a sin was not a sin against God, God would not be able to forgive that sin because he, he's not in that equation at all. But because God has created everything, and in reality, sin and harming something God has created is hurting God too, God can say, I forgive you. So Jesus tells this man that he is forgiven. He's making a very big statement when he says that. Jesus is saying, I am not just a good teacher. I am not just a religious leader. I'm not just a prophet. My authority comes from God because I am God. That's what Jesus said when he forgave the sins of that man. And then to prove his point, he does the impossible and heals the paralytic man right there. And that paralytic man just gets up and walks home. So he healed him, not just physically, but spiritually as well. So who is Jesus? This week, this, this story, what I want you guys to know, I want you to know that by Jesus' own words, he made it pretty clear that Jesus is God. So what I want you guys to do, uh, I want you guys to do this next here. We've got a little exercise. So that same piece of paper that you had, that you've been writing on, I want you to write, if Jesus isn't God, then blank. If Jesus isn't God, then. So you might be saying, okay, fine, Jesus is God, but what does that mean for me? Why does, why does that matter? To help you that, I want, I want to try something out. So um, if Jesus isn't God, then what? So finish that sentence. If Jesus isn't God, then what would our faith look like? What, what would our world look like? What would your life look like? So take a minute here and think about that. Reflect on that a little bit. If Jesus isn't God, then what? Go ahead and finish that statement now.
Okay, so now that you've finished that next, underneath that, I want you to write this. If Jesus is God, then. Things would be much different if Jesus weren't God than they were with God. So I want you guys to take a moment here and just write out, if Jesus is God, then what would that mean for your faith? What does that mean for your life? What, what, does, that, what does that mean? If Jesus is God, then finish that statement. So I have one last question for you tonight. Let's assume for a second that Jesus is God, like he just claimed he was. So we've talked about what would, what would it look like if Jesus isn't God, and then what would it look like if Jesus is God. But I have one last question for you, and I want you to write this. Jesus is God, or if Jesus is God, I will blank. If Jesus is God, I will. So I want to take a little min minute here, and I want you to think about that. If Jesus is really God, it should change everything about your life, about our faith, and about the way that you see people. Maybe knowing Jesus is God has already changed you, or maybe uh, you're not really sure about that and you're wrestling with that. No matter where you are in your journey um, of faith, I hope that you, this week, that you at least consider and you take some time and to really think about the fact that Jesus is God, and if Jesus is God, I will do what? Because if Jesus is really God, it should encourage you to do something about it. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I'm so glad that you were here. I really hope you guys take the time to reflect and consider and really chew over that thought of like, if Jesus is God, what then? So I'm going to sign off here in a second, but I want to let you know something. We've got some good challenges and some fun happening uh, this week on Instagram. So I wanted to make sure you guys keep an eye out for that. Uh, I got some prizes and we've got some good stuff there. So make sure you, you keep that out. Uh, keep an eye out. Wow. Make sure you keep an eye out for everything that's happening out there uh, because we want to get you connected. And I've got some really fun stuff coming up this week. Thank you guys again, and don't forget to click that description and tune in for the game right now. I'll see you guys later.